NFL predictions, orchestra, and Italy. All this on today's broadcast. Welcome, welcome to This Week Today. I'm Neil A.M. Thank you so much for joining us. It has been a busy week. CEO of Tesla and X, Elon Musk, joined former President Trump on the campaign trail in Pennsylvania. Here's a clip and see if you can make out the part where he effectively uses a dramatic pause. Like, text people now. <laughs> now. And then make sure they actually do vote. If they don't, this will be the last election. Also, Saturday Night Live was back last Saturday night with impressions from Maya Rudolph, Dana Carvey, and Andy Samberg. Get your facts straight, Jack. <laughs> you gotta hit him with a, no joke, here's a deal. <laughs> Let me be clear. <laughs> anyway, guess what? And by the way, Meanwhile, in North Carolina, Vice President Harris surveyed hurricane damage. Speaking of which, there's a hurricane. Hurricane Helene is classified as a Category 4 in a scale in which 5 indicates the greatest wind speeds. Helene hit Florida on September 26th and has since been moving through Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and Tennessee, leaving behind 227 confirmed deaths at the time of the recording. Here's the deal, no joke, and by the way, Hurricane Milton is a Category 3 hurricane. It hit Tampa, Florida on October 9th. Leaving 10 confirmed deaths as of taping, Milton is now headed to the Atlantic Ocean. This has been a heavy segment, but we have some more news, so I hope this helps. Ethel Kennedy passed away on October 10th at the age of 96. She was a human rights activist and widow to Robert F. Kennedy, who was a nephew to former President John F. Kennedy. In some world news, October 7th marked the one-year anniversary of the Hamas-led attack in Israel that killed 12,000 people. World's peace does not seem to be on the horizon. Here's the deal, no joke, and by the way, back in the US, Shazam star Zachary Levi and Lady Gaga's father, Joe Germanato, have endorsed Trump, while musician Bruce Springsteen, pop star Chapel Roan, and actress Jennifer Lawrence have publicly blacked, backed Harris. With just 25 days until election night, this is going to be a heck of a November 5th. Let's see which one of these gets to be POTUS, which one of these gets access to White House roses, and which one of these gets to completely disappear from public eye once being elected vice president. That's our show. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Good day. Hey Wildcats, on Thursday, October 24th, Culture Club will be having a meeting at 2.50 p.m. in room 182. They will be learning about Italian culture and tiramisu will be provided. Have a great day, Wildcats. What's up, Wildcats? Are you interested in crocheting? I'll head on down to the Crochet Interest Group in room 160 on October 14th from 2 to 3 p.m. See you there, Wildcats. Hey, Nawai. Come join us on October 13th from 1 to 4 p.m. for Japanese Festival. We are going to be having kendo, martial arts, and authentic Japanese food for you. What up, Wildcats? Classical Music Group has their next meeting on the 16th of October in room 142, which is the orchestra room. Make sure to show up for a listening party and free hot cocoa. Hey, hey, hey. Are you coming to the Novi High School Orchestra concert? I got better things to do. Come to the Novi High School Orchestra concert on October 15th, Tuesday. There will be performances from all four orchestras. Bring your friends and family. It'll be a great time. Hey Noah, Noah Interact Club's meeting this Monday and Thursday after school at room 187. Make sure to be there because you'll be helping us make college application poster for college application week. You'll be also awarded volunteer hours if you show up. So make sure to sign up at Novi Interact Club Schoology Interest Group. Dear Asian Youth, Novi will be hosting the Voting in Your Right and Power event this Saturday at 1.30 p.m. in the Novi Public Library Hall Meeting Room. This event will focus on the importance of voting and civic participation and will include guest speakers from the advocacy organization American Citizens for Justice. You may also have the opportunity to pre-register to vote depending on your age. Join Dane this Saturday to learn how you can make a difference. Have a great day, Wildcats. 
What's good, Wildcats? Here's your sports recap for Friday. Starting off with our Novi Boys varsity tennis team, who currently has their regional matches going on. And tonight at 7, the Novi Boys varsity football team takes on Howell at home. The theme is pink out, so be there in your pink to show support for breast cancer awareness. Hey, Novi. Did you see the Northern Lights that were in the sky last night? It was the second ever G4 rating since 2003. If you missed it, here's some photos I was able to capture of the spectacle last night. Hi, I'm Christian and I'm here with Mr. Kim. Hi, Mr. Kim, what do you teach here at Nova? Uh, chemistry and AP Biology. And what is your unpopular opinion? Emo is not dead. Hi, I'm Christian and I'm here with Mrs. Stoyanov. And what do you teach here at Nova? Biology. And what is your unpopular opinion? That I do not think Will Ferrell is funny. Hi, I'm Christian and I'm here with Mr. Scavo. Hi, Mr. Scavo, what do you teach here at Nova? I teach many of the engineering classes that we have here at Nova High School. And what is your unpopular opinion? I don't like tomatoes. What's up, Novi? We are back with our next NFL Sunday predictions. Our first game is the Commanders at the Ravens, and Jaden Daniels looks amazing. I think he's going to win Rookie of the Year, but Ravens are more experienced, and they're just a lot tougher of a team. Give me Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. The game against the Bengals was really tough for the Ravens. They basically lost. I'm going to still take the Ravens. I don't think the Commanders' defense can keep up with Lamar. Jaden Daniels has gotten off to an amazing start in his career, but I'm going to go with the more experienced dual threat, Lamar Jackson. Give me the Ravens in this one. Our next game is the Cardinals at the Packers, and the Cardinals got Kyler Murray, and they just pulled out a win against the Niners last week, but the Niners are extremely banged up and most of their players are hurt. I'm gonna go with the Packers. They're starting to find their rhythm, and they actually look really good. It's not surprising the Cardinals won against the 49ers. Purdy is not that good of a quarterback. I'm gonna take the Packers with this game because Jordan Love's looking really good, even though I don't like him. Yeah, I'm gonna go against both of them here. I'm gonna go with the Cardinals. I'm a huge fan of Kyler Murray. I think he's a great player, and I think that he's gonna weld him to a win against the Packers. Give me the Cardinals. Next game is the Chargers at the Broncos, and Boatnex is starting to finally figure it out, and I'm glad for him. The Broncos are a good team, finally. Just give me the Broncos. I'm gonna be honest, I think the Chargers can win this game. I don't think Bonix has found his footing yet. Even though he's won the last two games, I still think Justin Herbert can win this out. Yeah, Bonix start, is starting to find himself a little bit. But again, I'm going to go with more experience. I think Jim Harbaugh is an incredible coach, and I think it's going to be low scoring, probably like a 17-14, 2017 game. But give me the Chargers with Justin Herbert. All right, next game is the Steelers at Raiders. And being honest, I have not paid attention to the Raiders, but I know that the Steelers were not all that I said them to be. Uh, they're slowly falling off. Give me the Raiders. I still think the Steelers are a really good team. Justin Fields didn't look so well with the Dallas, against the Dallas Cowboys, but the Raiders don't look any better. So I'm going to still take the Steelers. Yeah, Fields didn't look great on Sunday night, but it was pouring rain all day, terrible conditions. Uh, I think the Steelers are going to bounce back in a big way here. I think TJ Watts can have a big game. Uh, the Raiders just don't really have a good quarterback. Uh, give me the Steelers in this one on the road. Next is the Lions at the Cowboys, and if anybody thinks I'm going to pick against my Lions right here, they're completely wrong. This is a revenge game after last year. Uh, the Lions are definitely going to win. It's not even going to be close. Decker reported. Anyway, Dallas is going to lose this game no matter what. The run defense is really bad right now, and Lions have the best run, running back duo. I'm going to take the Lions. Yeah, the Lions have been looking like maybe the best team in football through the first month of the season. Uh, I just don't see any way that the Cowboys can keep up with the Lions offense when they have Dak Prescott as their quarterback. So give me the Lions big here. Our final game is going to be the Bills at the Jets, and the Bills... I don't know. I don't know what's going on with them. And same with the Jets. This is going to be either a very low scoring game or a very high scoring game. It's not going to be in between. I'm still going to take the Bills though. The Bills have disappointed me yet again. Josh Allen is actually throwing my fantasy team right now. I'm going to take the Jets. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers has definitely been showing his age. They got some issues over there. Uh, Rodgers is struggling with that Achilles. Uh, I know Josh Allen played pretty bad against the Texans last week, but I expect him to bounce back in a big way. Give me the Bills in this one. That concludes this week's NFL Sunday predictions. Stay tuned for next week. What's up, Wildcats? Do you want your story featured on the Cat's Eye News? Email us at nhscatseyenews at gmail.com. Remember, Wildcats, you always have to face struggles before you get to success. Thanks for watching today's episode.
We'll see you next time with another episode next week, Wednesday. Meanwhile, I'll see you later, Wildcats.